Every day, hundreds of thousands of patrolmen report for duty, armed with a badge and the latest in video technology. You are about to witness their never-before-seen footage, their stories caught on tape. This guy never sees it coming. This guy just won't give up. Officers under fire. Troopers under assault. And a wedding day goes wrong. Very, very wrong. Here comes disorderly conduct, all dressed up and ready to roll. stolen van with two car theft suspects on board drives down an L.A. freeway with one large police escort. The cameraman briefly follows the patrol cars before he shoots more of the 90-minute pursuit at street level. The passenger flashes gang signs. Then suddenly... Everything happens so fast you can't even see the white sedan he hits in the intersection. The impact is so hard, the van spins three times and almost overturns. In seconds, the cops pull the two suspects out. Amazingly, neither is seriously injured. They're cuffed and marched away to face multiple charges, including stealing the van and failing to stop for police. Paramedics attend to the innocent victim in the wrecked sedan, but the driver's not seriously hurt. And that's good news when you see the terrifying impact. In Oklahoma City, a Mustang spins after officers use the precision immobilization technique the pit maneuver. Cops try again. The driver is wanted for failure to appear on drug and weapons charges, and he's been fleeing at speeds of 110 miles an hour. He pulls off the moves of a professional stunt driver as other officers prepare to take him out. Once again, it's a perfect pit. He slams into the wall of the bridge and comes close to going over the top. He's off the road and on the grass and away again. For just a few moments. It takes a series of successful pits to finally pull this 25-year-old suspect out of action. Officers find a gun, cash, and methamphetamines in the car. Now, in addition to outstanding warrants for prior violations, he faces charges for fleeing as well. This is one driver Oklahoma City cops will be glad to have off the road for a while. Are you okay? No, I'm okay. Because you're shaking in this car. No, I'm okay, man. Are you all right? It's Memorial Day weekend in Four Oaks, North Carolina. State troopers Anthony D. Giovanni and J.E. Clark have pulled over a DUI suspect on a busy freeway. Do you get nervous around the police sometimes? Trooper D. Giovanni sits in his car with the suspect and questions him as Trooper Clark stands outside the passenger window. Are you okay? I'm okay. Okay. Right. They have their suspicions about the driver, but they have no idea what's about to happen next. Where did you stay at in Miami? The camera in Trooper Clark's empty car gets the horror on tape. It's a frightening crash as a pickup truck veers off the freeway and slams into the rear of the squad car with D. Giovanni and the suspect inside. Oh, my God. Man, are you okay? 
The driver of the pickup stumbles out of the cab. The suspect is okay. But Clark is frantic with worry about his fellow trooper who is barely responding. The driver of the truck continues to stumble around. Clark finally gets his buddy away from the wreck. Trooper D. Giovanni is in a lot of pain, but he's concerned about yet a third passenger in his car. Reno, the drug-sniffing dog kept in a cage in the backseat of D. Giovanni's crushed car. Seconds after the impact, a terrified Reno is seen running from the crash. He goes missing for several hours, but is later found six miles from the scene unhurt. A lucky day for him and for everyone else involved, all of whom survived with minor injuries, including the driver of the pickup, who was charged with reckless driving after falling asleep at the wheel. Where did you stay at in Miami? Next up on Disorderly Conduct, Cops chase a truck and drive right into a deadly ambush. A medical truck takes a tumble, and a lady driver makes a mad dash for it. Don't run away. There's more disorderly conduct right ahead. There are warrants for the driver of this white truck, and he has no intention of being arrested. Dash cams record the chase from several Denton County, Texas police cars. As officers pursue the fugitive, he uses the whole road to try to get away. He makes a desperate run for his home. He unlocks the door and dashes into the mobile home as other cars pull up. Moments later, all hell breaks loose. He opens fire. These shots are aimed right at the officer with the dash cam. The suspect is armed with an SKS assault rifle, a high-powered automatic weapon which could easily overpower the officers. Trooper Stephen Oliver is down after being hit in the thigh. Now his fellow officers try to rescue him. Officers slowly move a car to cover them while they try to reach their fallen comrade. 3450, the unit's on the street. We need to get the backside covered. The suspect continues to fire at the officers. Trooper Oliver is rushed to the hospital, where he undergoes surgery for his bullet wound. Five hours after the suspect opens fire, he's hit by a sharpshooter. Friends tell police he was high on methamphetamines and did not want to go back to jail. This is a gas station convenience store in Sneeds, Florida. Watch the man in black with the baseball cap. From another camera, we see the suspect grab a 12-pack of beer and take it to the counter. He waits for just the right moment. He just stole a 12-pack of beer. A cop shows up a little later to investigate when amazingly, the suspect returns to the scene of the beer heist. 
That's the suspect standing, now without his baseball cap. The officer tells him to sit down so he can ask him some questions. The suspect becomes agitated, and the officer tells him to stay seated. But the guy keeps trying to stand. We suddenly find out why. Two surveillance cameras capture the takedown as soda and water bottles fly. The cashier calls 911 as the officer keeps him on the ground. Another officer arrives, and the man is cuffed and taken into custody. It's strange behavior for a suspect who faces a simple charge of stealing a 12-pack. Until officers discover he's also wanted in Louisiana for a parole violation and forgery charges. Now the beer bandit's serving 12 months in state prison. Reno, Nevada. A highway patrol trooper closely follows a vehicle carrying two men near the city's airport. The driver is suspected of being drunk as he straddles lanes. It's soon apparent he has no intention of stopping, so the trooper shines his spotlight on the car. When the driver hits the gas, the trooper hits the siren. The pursuit quickly picks up speed as the driver circles around the airport's perimeter. After he races through a residential area, he turns into a parking lot. But the area is fenced in. The driver quickly runs out of road and is rammed by the squad car. With his car still in gear, the driver bolts from his seat and barely misses being run over. The passenger wisely decides not to run and is arrested after he emerges from the vehicle. After a short foot pursuit, the driver is arrested as well. He faces charges of both felony evasion and driving while intoxicated. It's a stolen medical truck in Pacoima, California, loaded with potentially hazardous materials. As she cuts a corner in the San Fernando Valley, the driver clips the curb and the truck topples over. Those are volatile oxygen tanks rolling down the road. LAPD officers surround the wrecked truck. The woman is still inside. Suddenly, she kicks out the broken windshield and runs. After a short foot chase, the suspect is tackled and brought down hard. This whole strange incident started when a private citizen reported the woman's erratic driving. And that led to her 50-minute road rampage. The woman is taken to the hospital for observation and treatment of a nose injury that she suffered when she was tackled. The woman faces six counts of hit and run plus four felony charges resulting from the accidents and driving under the influence. And it was the woman's erratic driving that finally brought this chase to a safe conclusion. Coming up on Disorderly Conduct, a trooper's iron grip is the only thing between a woman and certain death. And a fast pursuit ends in a horrendous crash. Look out. There's plenty more disorderly conduct coming up. Wisconsin trooper Les Bolt chases a car at 105 miles an hour. The woman behind the wheel drives onto a bridge 200 feet above the Fox River.
Trooper Bolt's feet leave the ground as he grabs the woman, who plunges headfirst towards certain death. The woman struggles with the trooper, who desperately holds on to one arm. She could easily drag him with her in that fatal fall. For a long 16 seconds, the trooper hangs on to the woman, who fights to get out of his grip. Finally, Two other officers arrive and wrestle the distraught woman back over the wall. It's revealed that the woman suffers from postpartum depression, and now she'll get the help she needs. Officer Bolt is treated for minor injuries and is hailed as a hero by his superiors and the woman's grateful family. The trooper says he had to crouch down and jam his knees into the barrier when he caught the woman. Otherwise, they both would have tumbled those 200 feet to the icy water. Cops in Columbus, Ohio, know how to catch car thieves. They set up a bait car equipped with video, audio, and automatic engine cutoff and door locks. Then they wait for car-hungry crooks to take the bait. And when they get their evidence, that's exactly what this is. But listen as the passenger tries to get the driver to take the fall. That won't work once the cops check the tape. Now, the bait cars caught this young lady's eye. This bitch is wildly. Can you buy one umbrella? Just when you think she hasn't taken the bait. You gotta let me drive, bitch. This joyride is over. Now, this guy drives right into trouble. But he's got the perfect excuse for being caught red-handed in a stolen bait car. Nice try. This suspect comes equipped to steal the car. And now he gets his friends into trouble too. But their tough talk is short lived. Columbus police arrest dozens of car thieves thanks to their bait cars. And the incriminating video and audio lead to successful convictions of the drivers and their passengers. White truck weaves recklessly through heavy traffic as night falls on Sherman Oaks, California. It's a very dangerous situation. The truck hits more than 60 miles an hour, and police believe a drunk driver is behind the wheel. He flies past traffic and swerves to miss a car. He locks up his wheels and desperately tries to stop. But it's far too late. He slams into a minivan. The impact so hard, it sends the battered van and its terrified occupants backwards across the street. The man staggers out of the wrecked truck, but does not get far. Cops have been tailing him from a block behind, and they're quick to arrive on the scene. The innocent accident victims scramble out of the van and run for safety. As cops grapple with the man and finally take him down, hard. 
Amazingly, the women in the minivan and the truck driver are only treated for minor injuries. Coming up... It's one crazy hot pursuit that turns into a blazing inferno. And every store worker's worst nightmare comes calling. That's right ahead on Disorderly Conduct. It's a harrowing high-speed pursuit in Sumter County, South Carolina. As a suspect hitting speeds up to 100 miles an hour takes incredible risks on these backcountry roads. Police had spotted the suspect speeding. And now, it's a chase headed for disaster if they don't find a way to end it soon. The almost 1050 is vehicles. 10.50 is police jargon for a vehicle crash. Down the road, Police Chief Randy Garrett and another officer have put out some stop sticks to slow down the suspect. The fleeing driver swerves around the spikes and loses control. Chief Garrett saw the whole thing from the side of the road. One of the officers rams a suspect, and he crashes into a gas pump. He crashes into an X-Con and Manning. Still in the vehicle, gas tank got fire. Off camera, Chief Garrett has caught up with the chase and works frantically with Sergeant Rick Elms to get the suspect out of the car, when Sergeant Elms suddenly collapses with a heart attack. Uh, myself and the other officer had to grab him and get him away from the flames and move him to the highway, where we then summoned for an ambulance. Meanwhile, the suspect remains in the car, doors locked with the radio playing full blast. The whole station could go up in flames at any moment, and he could easily burn to death. Officers evacuate a school full of children at the edge of the lot. They're in the county fire department on the way. Police move back, expecting the worst. I got minor damage to my vehicle. Still driving. That's when Chief Garrett decides it's time to act. Back from tending to Sergeant Elms, he runs to a squad car at the left of your screen. He puts it in gear and puts himself in maximum danger. It's a courageous move by Chief Garrett. But incredibly, this pursuit is still not over. He's taking off again. This time, the sheriff rams the car and ends it. As the suspect's radio blasts, officers try to force him out of the car. The suspect is arrested. The fire department has the fire under control. Sergeant Elms survives the heart attack. And this thing is finally over. 
the suspect was found to be schizophrenic and off his medication. He was booked for failure to stop and property damage. Bakersfield, California. A brazen thief suddenly opens fire on a convenience store clerk. The surveillance camera records the moans of the wounded clerk and the voice of the gunman through his clenched jaw. A young customer wisely backs away as the madman commits his crime. The shooter escapes, but he may have actually saved the clerk's life. When doctors treat his wounds, they discover a tumor that otherwise would have gone undetected. Downtown Los Angeles. Inside that car is a very dangerous man. Just hours ago, he escaped from jail through a storm drain, then carjacked this vehicle. And now he's not about to stop for the California Highway Patrol. The con slices through rush hour traffic. Then he sideswipes another car. As he exits the freeway, an officer decides it's time for a pit maneuver. But there are too many innocent motorists in the area, so the officer wisely backs off. A block away, the officer performs the pit. He executes the move perfectly, but the driver is on the run again. Soon, he's headed back to the freeway toward downtown LA. As he straddles traffic lanes, officers figure there are three possible reasons for his sloppy driving. He could be high on drugs, or he could just be a bad driver, or there's something wrong with his front end steering. This angle shows that it's reason number three. That front right tire looks like it's about to come completely off. And as he exits the freeway into heavy traffic, he's forced to use his parking brake to slow down. Now that he's about out of options, the con finally calls it quits. He's headed back to jail, but this time, things will be a little different. He was originally only serving one year for embezzlement. But now he's looking at a lot more than that for escape, carjacking, and felony pursuit. Next, on disorderly conduct, the bride goes ballistic. And it seems the honeymoon is over. And a man runs right into the long arm of the law. You can run, but you can't hide from disorderly conduct. It looks more like a procession than a car chase in Orange County, Florida. A police chopper and a freelance cameraman on a ride-along get the action. As police slowly pursue a suspect after he hijacked this Ford Expedition and took off down the highway, along with his girlfriend in the passenger seat. Police have used stop sticks, but the suspect keeps running on rims and busted tires. Now they put out more stop sticks to finish the job. He's gonna try to get around them. Uh, he, he, got him. he got him. Okay, hit the sticks, hit double sticks. The suspect now has only one good tire, but he's still going. Driver's door is open. Contact is getting hot in there. All right, get ready for a percent, guys. OK, 
Okay, close it back up. Still going. Until finally, it's the end of the road. He's halfway in, halfway out, yelling. Cops talk the suspect into letting his girlfriend out of the car. The suspect gets out too, but getting him to surrender won't be so easy. It turns out he's suicidal. At one point, he dares officers to shoot him. He's also armed with a baseball bat. After nearly an hour of playing cat and mouse with the suspect, police finally move to break the stalemate. An officer at the right leaps through the passenger door while the suspect is distracted. And now the situation nearly spins out of control. You got a stick. Look at this. This is crazy. The suspect lunges at officers with the bat. The cops restrain their fire, and one officer hits the suspect from behind with a stun gun. The suspect is under arrest. He's also believed to be under the influence of prescription drugs and very distraught. Now that the danger is passed, Trooper Charles Griffith comforts the suspect who a few minutes ago was begging to be shot. He is alive and uninjured, thanks to the professionalism and restraint displayed by these officers. Moments after this intense highway drama, officers are joking with the suspect. And Trooper Griffith is happy that the job got done using non-lethal force instead of bullets. He kept asking me to please kill him. Uh, I kept telling him that I wasn't going to kill him. That, that was not something that we even thought about doing. I was just like talking somebody out from jumping off of a bridge. He just don't want him to do it. He's trying to save a life, not take a life at that point. It's supposed to be the happiest day of this bride's life. But obviously, something has gone wrong. Very wrong. What are you looking at? Just hours after she gave her wedding vows, this woman is being arrested for causing a ruckus at the reception. I think those off. You gotta behave. I'm not. What am I gonna do? Beat the out of you guys? The 19-year-old Connecticut newlywed was not pleased when the bar was shut down. She began to throw everything from gifts to the wedding cake, and now she's charged with disorderly conduct. I may break the dress off because the stupid bought it. She takes out her frustrations at everyone from the officers not like you'd mind. Not the I'm not in a while. Keep it in mind. to her own flesh and blood. But she saves the majority of her anger for the man she just wed. I need to cut his off. That's what I need to do. He told me to go myself. He's not giving me any of my money, and he's not bringing me my car. Tell him he's himself, and I hope he rots in hell with you and you. If you let me near him, I swear to God, I'm telling you right now, I'll punch him right in the face. So why is she so upset with her brand new husband? He stole the he threw me out of a car going 96 miles an hour three weeks ago. Which raises the question, why did she tie the knot? He gave me $350,000. That's the only reason I married him. Finally, it's time for her to be released until a future court hearing. But it doesn't go well when an officer calls her husband to come get her. The decision is made that a girlfriend will take her home. Tell her to make sure to get my purse, my cigarettes, my credit card, and my lighter. After all this, she receives just a $90 fine. 
But that isn't the biggest surprise. The woman reconciled with her husband, and they ended up going on a lengthy honeymoon. Because she's a hoe, and he's a stupid <laughs> who will anything that he comes across. Because he's a hoe, and he's a stupid <laughs> who Police pursue a stolen SUV on the outskirts of Denver. Officers say that earlier the driver tried to run them down after they saw him enter the vehicle. Ground units lay back and let a chopper stay on top of the chase. Finally, the SUV rolls to a stop and the driver casually emerges. He spots the eye in the sky and then calmly carries on a cell phone conversation. Then with the phone still in his ear, he picks up the pace. Cruisers quickly close in, and he's almost run over. But once again, the man eludes the law. Moments later, his luck runs out as he's caught between a car and a cop. The suspect ends up with an injured ankle, but that's the least of his worries. He's charged with assault on a police officer, automobile theft, and multiple traffic offenses. Coming up on Disorderly Conduct. High speed horror as a cop car is hit hard. When the cop finds drugs, the suspect freaks out. There's more arresting disorderly conduct. Straight ahead. Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Corporal Brett Dennison pursues a suspect after seeing him nearly run down a woman in a parking lot. Parking on a target, now in pursuit, failing to yield. The corporal recognizes the vehicle as one that may have been carjacked and chased the week before. Knowing that the vehicle was carjacked and that there was a firearm involved on a prior incident, immediately the emotions start rising and that you're thinking, how's this going to end? Police broke off that earlier pursuit for fear that the suspect would cause a serious accident. Now he's back, and this time, they're determined to remove this menace from the highway. True to his reputation, the suspect drives with blatant disregard for the safety of others. He barrels through several red lights and into oncoming traffic. Up ahead, officers prepare to put out some stop sticks as Corporal Dennison tries to keep the way clear of oncoming traffic. Make sure you block the intersection. We're coming to the intersection right now. But now the pursuit begins to get out of control. Subject now turned out his headlights. He's playing the same game as last week. Attempting to avoid stop sticks, the suspect speeds into oncoming traffic lanes. Cops blocking the intersection ahead do not see the suspect approaching with his lights out. And Corporal Dennison's worst fears are about to be realized as the suspect slams into a patrol car driven by Officer Bradley Case. Hit it uh, over 90 miles per hour, shut off his headlights, went into opposing traffic, and actually passed a, a civilian vehicle head on at over 90 miles per hour uh, when he then actually struck a police vehicle. Corporal Dennison runs to check on the injured officer. At the same time, the suspect makes a run for it. As other cops run to help the injured officer, Corporal Dennison captures the suspect off camera. His mic is still on when he's accidentally shocked with a taser by another officer while pinning down the suspect. The pain is excruciating, but Corporal Dennison is more concerned about his fellow officer in the car. And he's still covering the suspect as best as he can. Shut your mouth, dude. Do yourself a favor you shut your mouth. My right arm's still good. Corporal Dennison was later treated for a separated shoulder. Officer Case survived with a broken collarbone and multiple cuts and bruises. The suspect suffered a punctured lung and was booked for fleeing and aggravated assault and for armed robbery at a video store committed earlier that same evening. In Little Rock, Arkansas, police have pulled a man over for speeding. They want to search his vehicle, but first, they need the driver's permission. Okay, what this is is a consent to search form saying it's okay if we look through your car, we're not making you cooperate or anything like that. 
If you give us consent, you have the right to revoke or limit the consent any time during the search. You understand that? And if you refuse or revoke or limit this consent, that cannot be used against you. Okay. The man agrees to the search and signs the consent form. He appears to have nothing to hide. Any question? No problem. But as officers go through his trunk, they discover a bag with marijuana inside it. They immediately read him his rights and slap the cuffs on him. They escort the man back to their cruiser. I can't believe you. Well, I don't believe it either. I'm just... <laughs> As the trooper gets out to continue the search with his partner, the suspect loses it big time. The officer hears the man's incessant screams and goes to check on him. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. What was that? You hollered late? No, sir, I'm just, I'm just freaked out. I'm just, I just can't believe it's happening. <laughs> it's not right. Sure not. I know. What... You got any more dope before you need to tell us? No, I don't. No, I don't. No, nothing. That's not a thing. You smoke it? No, sir, I don't. You don't want to use it? No, sir. No, sir, I don't. The suspect is charged with possession of an illegal substance. And you can bet if he's ever pulled over again, he'll think twice before he signs a consent to search form.